Okay, I know some of you have been waiting for this ever since the beginning of Chem 21. How do you name compounds that contain more than one functional group? So finally, here we are. And this can be found in the appendix of the Klein book. I think it's page A1 or something like that. So you need to look towards the end of the book. Um, and a lot of this information is replicated there. What they don't have, they have some examples, but they don't really have any problems for you to work on. So I'm gonna go through these rules and then um, do a couple of examples, and then I'll write a worksheet or something um, for you to get a little bit more practice naming them. I'm not gonna make a video of that. I'm just gonna provide you with answers. So a couple of things here. So first of all, this is a little bit like playing poker or something um, in that you need to know what group beats what. So here we have the compounds are listed in order of decreasing priority for IUPAC nomenclature. So as I said, you need to know what beats what. So a couple of trends here. First of all, carboxylic acids and their derivatives beat everything. Right, so carboxylic acids and their derivatives, they beat everything. You can put a little, not very straight line there, okay. Next up come aldehydes and ketones. And so what we have here are carbonyl compounds that are not carboxylic acids and derivatives. So a carbonyl beats other things, and among carbonyls, carboxylic acids, um, be everything else. Between um, aldehydes and ketones, aldehydes beat ketones. And you should know that. What I do not expect you to memorize or learn is which carboxylic acid derivatives beat what. Um, so I'm never going to give you a problem to do that's going to contain a carboxylic acid and another a carboxylic acid derivative or two different carboxylic acid derivatives. That's good news for a variety of reasons, which we'll get to momentarily. Then apparently alcohol beats nitrogen. So we have alcohols rank over amines, unless of course you're a poor ether and the ethers are sort of get the bad end of the deal there. So then we have amines. And then we have our hydrocarbon groups, um, where triple bonds sort of beat double bonds, beat single bonds. And the halides, we're always going to name as substituents. Um, and pretty much, we're going to name the ethers as substituents, unless they're just ethers. or I guess if you have halo ethers. And um, for the rules between um, alkenes and alkynes, um, it's a little bit weird. Um, they're named as alkene ines, and the way I think about that is it's alphabetical. Ene comes before ine. But the numbering is from the end closer to whichever one is closer to an end. So in other words, if you have a double bond closer to the end, then you're going to number from that end. So if you had a terminal double bond and an internal triple bond, you'd number from the double bond end. Um, if they're tied, then the alkene wins. Um, and the way I like to think about that is that if you're naming them as alkene ions, that you're going to end up in numerical order in this particular situation. So again, you should know that carboxylic acids and their derivatives beat everything else. You don't have to know which carboxylic acid beats derivative beats what. Um, aldehydes and ketones, alcohol. So anything with an oxygen beats other things. Then amines and then hydrocarbons. So the other piece to this, well, the other two pieces to this. First of all, we have the main functional group endings, which you already know, I hope. If you're going to name something as a substituent, so what's going to happen here is you're going to find 
the main functional group, and that's going to be your parent and your ending or suffix of your name, and then all of your other functional groups are named as substituents. And in order to do that, we need substituent functional groups. And we've met some of these already. We already know, for example, about you know hydroxy for um, an alcohol or alkoxy for an ether, um, certainly halo, um, because it's only a substituent, um, at least if you're naming systematically. Um, but we don't know all of these. Now, the good news is that the hardest ones are here. And you don't have to worry about those because I'm never going to give you a compound where the carboxylic acid or its derivative is a secondary functional group that has to be named as a substituent because I'm not going to give you a compound that has two of these. So then the ones you do have to worry about are oxo for aldehydes and ketones, except some of the time with aldehydes, and we'll cover that when we look at the example. So we have formal and we have oxo. Um, hydroxy for alcohols, amino for primary amines, and alkyl amino if it's not primary. And again, we'll deal with that with some of the examples. And as you already know, for alkynes and alkenes, you add the main functional group name to the alkyne name. So when I do nomenclature, I always talk about the hydrocarbon name, not the alkane name. Okay, so let's tackle a few examples. All right, since I've told you that we don't have to deal with compounds that have a carboxylic acid and another carboxylic acid derivative or two carboxylic acid derivatives, that takes these two examples off the table. We don't have to worry about number six or number four. So we can go ahead and get started here. So the first thing you have to do is decide which is your main functional group. You're going to number based on that. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to use the same numbering for your substituents. So we know that this OH group is a hydroxy. And if you forget that, um, it's up there. And my goal is to try to fit these in here. So we have three hydroxy cyclopentanone. And I'll let you in on a little bit, a little bit of a secret. The names are down here. Maybe we'll use those. So in this next one, we have to decide which is the main functional group. So the main functional group here is going to be the amide. So we do one, two, three, four, five. And we have an alkyl group on our amine, so that or in our amide, so we're going to have to deal with that. And I just realized we don't actually have a methyl group. My methyl group must have been lost. I'm going to just put that methyl group in here. There we go. Now we have a methyl group. Okay. Um, so in this particular case, we're going to name this um, carbonyl, this aldehyde carbonyl, as an oxo. And the rule is that you're going to use oxo if the carbon of the carbonyl is in the parent chain. If it's not in the parent chain, that's when you use formal. So if we look at the name here, we're going to cheat and use this name. So we have our two methyl groups. So we have N3-dimethyl. Um, remember, you can combine the alkyl group on the amine, on the amide with the other alkyl groups. And then this is named as an oxopentanamine. So again, this is an oxo, not a formal, because the carbon of the carbonyl is part of the parent chain. So then we play the same game here. So we're going to number this. So nitriles, even though they don't look like it, are carboxylic acid derivatives. So we have one, two, three, four, 
five, and then we have to decide what to do. We have more carbons if we go across than if we go up. So that makes that our parent chain. And now we're gonna call this group formal. So if you look at these two compounds, you can see the, the uh, similarities and differences. Let me highlight this parent chain as well. So if we look here, I could change that back to red, you can see that when we named this as oxo, that the carbonyl carbon was part of the parent chain. Here it's in this example, three, it's not, so we call this formal. And then, so we have our main nitrile, and then we have a methoxy group that's on carbon four, a formal group that's on carbon five, F comes before M, so formal is going to be first in the name before the methoxy. And so if we look at the name here, we have five formal, four methoxy, and then for the nitrile, you use the hydrocarbon name complete with the E, um, and then a nitrile at the end. Four is one we don't have to do. So now looking at number five, um, we have an aldehyde here and a amine here. The aldehyde is the main functional group. Okay. And so you might want to compare this um, with what we did in number three because here, since the aldehyde is the main functional group, it has to be part of the parent chain. So we're going to have, let's come up with a snazzy color here. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five. So we have an amine group on carbon four and an ethyl group on carbon two. So if we go down here and we look at the name for number five, let's see if we can get both of these in the same screen. Here we go. Um, so we have ethyl comes before the amino group. So we have um, two ethyl. And what you do with an amine that's a substituent is this would just be amino if it were NH2, but there's a methyl group on the nitrogen, so this becomes N methyl amino alphabetized as M, if that ends up mattering. So if we go down and look at the name here, we have 2 ethyl, 4 methyl amino. And I put that in parentheses so that it was clear what the four went with. And then uh, pentanyl, because we have a five carbon chain, that's an aldehyde. The pentanyl doesn't get a one because it's always at the end of the chain with an aldehyde. Number six, we don't have to do because it has an acid halide and an amide. So that brings us to number seven. And again, let's go ahead and highlight the parent chain. So here we have both an, al an aldehyde and a ketone. And remember in this scenario that the aldehyde wins over the ketone. Um, you can remember that it's alphabetically, or you can remember that when you're going to do your numbering that the aldehyde is always going to be at the end of the chain. So numerically, it's going to beat the ketone, however you want to think about remembering that. So here we have a chloro group. And again, this is an example. This is going to be 
and oxo, not a formal, because the carbonyl carbon is part of the parent chain. So that's going to give us uh, two chloro, five oxo, and then we have six carbons, so it's hexene al. So if we go down, we look at the name, we have two chloro, five oxo, three hexene al. You kind of can't avoid stereochemistry when you're doing line structures of alkenes. So we do have to specify that that's the E configuration and there should only be one dashed line there. So that gives us this compound. And finally, we have an example that has both an alkene and an alkyne. So first thing we're gonna do is look for the parent chain. And remember um, that the rules are that we start numbering from whichever one is closer to the end. Well, here they're both tied for the end. And so we go kind of alphabetically by functional group. So that means we're going to start numbering at the alkene end. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That's always kind of a weird one. So we have two methyl groups. And again, it's going to be an 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 ene ine situation. So our name is going to be three four dimethyl one hexene five ine. And I don't think Klein goes over this, but it's a question that perennially comes up. Um, if you're struggling with naming a little bit um, for the amine chapter, which this is at the end of. I put up a video from someone called Leah for Science, and I thought that her explanation of the amine naming was really very good. She was recommended to me by a former student, or her videos were recommended to me by a, a former student. And she also has some other naming uh, videos as well. I didn't find one that was for more than one functional group, but if you want a way of reviewing um, your naming, it's Leah for Psy um, and they're on YouTube and she'll try to sell you her cost videos and her workbook as well. Um, but I really thought she did a great job of the naming with the um, amines and that's why I picked that particular video. Um, but she has you know the naming of all the other functional groups as well if you wanna look at that and, and other videos, not just naming. It's all right, naming plus.